What's up you guys? Avery here bringing you guys another Degenerate Burn deck that my dad has created that I've gotten from my collection of so many burn decks here. And this one, as you can tell by the title, is Kazaki 2. Um, this is because this is a second variation of Kazaki Burn. Obviously it's not in the main deck here because um, he's still been working on it. Uh, it's not quite perfected but I think that this is the best that it can be right now just because of the fact that you know it's not the best of burn decks obviously but it's something different that I still wanted to put out for you guys because you guys showed so much support on that chain burn video it has almost a thousand views which is insane I mean when I checked it just the other day it was at like over 600 views and I mean the, the numbers have been going up so quick so Let's just hop right into this deck profile for you guys, and be sure to smash that like button if you want to see more burn videos, whether you want to see a Chain Energy build, which I also have, um, another Kazaki build, um, a more stall-based build, whatever you guys want to see, let me know, because I've got a collection in here, and obviously you guys like it, so I'm going to keep on bringing it to you. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. So, the reason why it was called Kazaki is because it revolves around cards that are like Kazaki self-destruct button, where it inflicts a thousand damage to the player who destroyed this set card <coughs> so you can't actually activate the card however you can set it so you know let's say that you set five back row and just pass turn and the opponent goes end phase you know twin twisters and they end up popping two kazaki self-destruct button they're going to take two thousand damage and they're not really going to want to take the risk of popping your back row since they'll be taking damage same thing with uh, mecha dog marin when Mecha Dog Mirror is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, it inflicts a thousand damage to both players. And when it's on the field and destroyed and sent to the graveyard except by battle, so by a card effect, it inflicts a thousand damage to your opponent. So, you know, let's say it's for whatever reason face up on the field and, you know, they want to dryden and pop it, they're going to have to take a thousand. Or if they attack into it, they're going to have to take a thousand. So, it's one of those very interesting cards. So, without any further ado, however, though, I want to get into this tech profile. So starting off with the monster lineup, you'll notice that we're playing three Lava Golem instead of two. You really want to focus more on making sure that your opponent keeps their monsters off the board, keep their board presence down to a minimum, so that's why we're playing three Lava Golems instead of two, like you saw in the Chamber and video. We're also playing three Mecha Dog Marin, one Speedroid Manko. It's basically a battle fader. You can special summon it, and it changes all your opponent's monsters to defense mode. And then we have three card card D, three Swift Scarecrow, and two Battle Fader. That's it for the monsters. For spells, we have one One Day Apiece, three Pot of Duality, one Scapegoat, and three Chain Energy. Chain Energy is a really interesting card because what it does is that you lose 500 life points per card to Normal Summon, Special Summon, Set, or Activate cards from the player's hand. So normally the way that you play this card is that you do all your plays, you set up all your back row, and then the last card you activate is Chain Energy. That way you don't lose any life points. And then you pass turn to your opponent. So then when they draw for turn, if they want to say activate a Twin Twisters, they're going to take 500. If they want to normal summon Rat Pierre, they're going to take 500. Um, they want to activate Tanky, they're going to take 500. Activate Zodiac Barrage, they're going to take 500. So they keep on playing more and more cards in their hand. It's going to take more and more of a toll on their life points. So, And it definitely helps, again, with the burn aspect. <coughs> For the uh, traps, we have two Wabaku. And then three Secret Blast. So what this card does, this is the new card that I saw Robbie talking about in his Chain Burn video where it does 300 damage to the opponent, but it's not like Secret Barrel where it does 200 for every card on the field in hand. It only does the field. So you take 300 damage or the opponent takes 300 damage for each card they control, then if it's on the field and destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, they take 1,000. So, again, it combos well with something like Kazaki's Self-Destruct Button or even Bad Luck Blast, where your opponent tries to Twin Twister it, and let's say that they hit two Secret Blasts, you can chain both of the Secret Blasts, they'll take 300 for each card on their field, and then they'll take 1,000 per Secret Blast that they just popped. So, very, very good card. Definitely something to worry about. And then we've got three Secret Barrel, three Threatening Roar, three Trying Guess. We're playing, should be 15 Fusions. You could throw in a 15th Fusion. It really doesn't matter. Um, just to help keep our life points up. And then three Bad Luck Blast. And what this does is that you target a face-up monster your opponent controls. You take damage equal to half that monster's current attack. Then you inflict damage to your opponent equal to the damage you took. So it's basically a ring of destruction, but it doesn't pop the monster. Then you can only activate one Bad Luck Blast for, per turn. And then if you control this card and it's destroyed by your opponent's card effect and sent to your graveyard, then the opponent takes a thousand. So you could in theory have three bad luck blast or three secret blast and one bad luck blast set and the opponent could somehow pop all four of these and then they're gonna take four thousand points of damage just because they were popping your set cards. So 
definitely makes your opponent weary of wanting to pop the back row. That's the plan anyway. And then that way you can be able to like keep your chain energy up and all that good stuff. Then the side is just pretty much things that you could throw in here. I'm not really going to go over it. You could kind of do like a chain burn side deck if you wanted to. You could take out like the bad luck blast and the secret blast and all that stuff and just make it a more chain burn esque video or chain burn esque deck. What am I saying? Oh, uh, you could also throw in like let's say three Kazaki self destruct button and replacement of like I don't know the try and guess if you wanted to anything like that. The extra decks are relevant. You just want 15 fusions for try and guess. So that is pretty much it for this deck profile, you guys. Um, not as stally as a normal chain burn deck. It's more burn oriented, and it's more kind of forcing your opponent to where they won't want to pop your back row because they'll be afraid of taking a thousand damage or more. So it's definitely something to worry about. You're not going to see a normal chain burn deck play this uh, just because it's not, you know, the most optimal. Like if you want the most optimal build of chain burn, you're going to want to play the one you know, that I deck profiled the other day, not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I just don't think the Zodiac engine is all that good, and it just makes it too inconsistent. But that's it for this video, you guys. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like or favorite. Be sure to hit that ding-dong notification bell, be part of the hashtag notification squad, even though it sounds so stupid. <laughs> and um, thank you guys for all the support. And like I said, keep on subscribing. We're almost to a 1,000 subs, and uh, we're going to get there. So thank you guys for watching, as always, and subscribe if you have not already.